uh, art so bad it kills or eats your face or something. Welcome back, you suffer. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna make a movie about a uh, killer. It'll be it'll be uh like uh it'll okay. So this this is my pitch. It's a movie <laughs> okay. that's gonna take place inside of a uh, still life art drawing class. And one of the pieces are going to be like chattering teeth. Oh, uh huh. And they're going to come to life and eat faces. Okay. Done. I'm in. Million dollars. I'm not going to lie. That That sounds terrible. I know. (laughs) But we'll watch it for the podcast. So. All right. Perfect. We're just job security, you know? Yeah. Your job as an artist, our job as podcasters. So. (laughs) This This is a completely functioning, uh, self-driving machine where we make movies to review on our own podcast yeah that's right This is episode 287, I think, of I Be Suffer. Mm. I'm good at counting. I'm not good at counting. <laughs> uh, the one that is the best at counting is not here. So Yeah, the only one here that can probably <laughs> do math is not here. So uh, I was good at math in high school. I just haven't done it since. I hated it, but... I'm not good at math never have been or will be it's fine i've made peace with it (laughs) uh we're gonna talk about 2017's vampire clay very good movie i was here for it yeah I i wasn't sure what to think because to be very honest with you the cover looks kind of like our typical like we watched this on tubi it's obviously not a tubi movie but the cover kind of looks like one of those like shitty Tubi movies, and it's also from 2017. And I've talked about this before in like some other Japanese uh, movie. This obviously is Japanese, um, where it'll be like a movie from the last. I was gonna say the last couple of years. It's 2024, so 2017 factually was not the last couple of years, but might as well be. I'm pretty sure a couple uh, of years ago it was 1996. Where, like, exactly. Where, like, this movie visually, like, not the effects or anything like that, which we'll get into, but it looks quality-wise, like... Like what you'd expect it's to just from stumble 2007. across on Tubi about killer clay. Right, but it looks like it's from, like, the late, like the early 2000s, like 2007 or whatever. So I wasn't really sure what to, to expect. This movie slaps. It's so good. Yeah, it was very fun. <laughs> um... It's like I I try to do some like digging on it, but there's really not much information um, about it, except for um, most of the actors and actresses in this movie. This was their first movie, which was very surprising to me because I felt like the performances were all very good. Yeah, which I feel like is difficult for like a horror movie, especially because like. Most of it's just, like, screaming and reacting to, well, in this case, a clay doll that's trying to kill you. So I was, like, surprised to hear that, except for, obviously, the one guy um, is from Juon and Audition. So, like, he's been in stuff. He's, he's like, a seasoned actor. Um, but I liked the story. I think, overall... This movie goes off the rails real fast and then <laughs> continues to go off the rails. And, like, obviously there's a little bit of, like, I don't know what the budget was, but you can tell that there was, like, probably some budget issues. But the stuff that they can pull off, like, us outside of that was, like, so impressive. Yeah. And it's, like, the story, I think, is fine like it makes sense for what's happening in it it's it's got like so like this movie i think like i i know we talked like because we've done like a, a good amount of like killer inanimate object 
at least talk on the podcast, if not, like, actual movies. Mm-hmm. And, like, I'm very specifically, I'm thinking about when we did, like, Killer Sofa, where, like, my big complaint was that, like, they just didn't do enough with, like, the premise and, like, the idea of the sofa, like, you know, being a killer. Right. Um, I feel like they did a lot with the clay in this. Yeah, and like, it, like the yeah. the the premise behind it is dumb and makes sense at the same time, and like, or like you know, dumb and something you could like buy into. Like right. all of the claymation stuff looks goopy and gross and pretty awesome. Like it's yeah, it's just I I I loved it. Like there's a sequel. I don't know if I'll watch because it's not online for one. But I feel like the yeah. sequel's probably not good. But. I it's called Kakame Vampire Clay Derivation. I don't know what that means. Yeah, I don't know. Derivation. Uh, the thing that I liked about it too is that like this is a like there have been the the idea behind what's happening in this movie, which we'll get into, is like not wholly unique, right? Like the story is like kind of like a trope, I would say. And um, there's plenty of other movies that feature some kind of like th- there's even one in um, Treehouse of Horror where it's more of like a tulpa or like a golem type thing where there's like some kind of clay creature like clay creatures exist or whatever. But the thing that I really liked about this movie that took it in like a unique way is that every single time something happens with the clay doll, it's like something different is happening. Mm. It's not just the same thing over and over again where he's like, uh, you know, I don't know. Well, we'll get into some of the body horror stuff that happens in this movie, but it is really reminiscent of like you, this is like, this is like a quintessential Japanese horror movie. I feel in that there's lots of phallic situations. There's like the goopy thing kind of like in Tetsuo and like Uzumaki and, you know, that kind of like imagery that goes through but the stuff that happens in it, I thought there's a lot of things that I just was like, wow, that's actually so cool. I will say, going back to last week, this is my favorite haunted object now. I, I literally, <laughs> when you brought that up, I just listened to the Q&A yesterday. And, and of course, I was like, somehow, even though I feel like I watch the most like paranormal things out of everybody, I could not think of a single thing. So I'm going to go forward <laughs> and say Vampire Clay from now on. Yeah. Um, I did find one thing that I thought was extremely interesting when I was like trying to look up info because I was wondering if this was like based off of something or like what the deal was. And the only thing that I could find was like a press kit website from when the movie came out. And um, that's how I saw like the bios of all the actors. Uh, Like I said, almost all of them, except for like the two adults. All of the kids, it was either their first or second movie, which again, I was really impressed um but then i saw a thing for the director whose name is suichi umezawa where it said that um basically the reason that he made this movie is because um and as we'll see like in this movie the theme of it is that these kids are in a prep art like academy so that they can try and get into an art school and art schools in Tokyo are notorious. I I would say any university in Tokyo is like, they're notoriously hard to get into. Right. So you go to school and then you go to prep school in order to get into more school. And that's just kind of like their lifestyle. And so essentially like the director was trying to get into art school and um, he went to prep school for like four years in order to get into an art academy. And then he ended up failing and or not failing. You don't fail. They just either accept you or you don't. Right. It's not like a regular exam. It's art. Um, he didn't get in. And so he basically developed this like passion that he describes as more of like a grudge to basically like prove that he is worthy and so like the way he wanted to do that was by making a movie so he like literally this movie is kind of like his life story except for like the the clay vampire part of it which i think is like so must have been i i actually don't know what the reception of this movie was like outside of 
I don't know. I think it's, I think it, to me, I think he succeeded. Like, I think this movie is amazing, especially because he like started to self teach himself special effects. And I think it like, I don't know. I, I think you can tell by looking at it, watching this movie that he's like actually really talented. And so, yeah, like the, the, I think like, well, number one, I think more art should be made out of spite. Because it usually mm-hmm. is good. <laughs> like, literally, though. Uh, Chris Redard and I were texting last night about music stuff. And we were talking about, like, ba- how bands that all actively hate each other tend to make the best music. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but, yeah, like, I, I think... God damn it. The, uh, the special effects in this... I think, like, like I, I you know, I don't, I don't know what the idea was of behind making this clay being a a vampire living creature thing but like it was smart because you can like you could get away with using less blood which makes means you know a lot less cleanup and also like easier on kind of sensor stuff mm-hmm. like evil dead 2 they talk about like like so much of the stuff in the movie, like the goop and like gore and stuff, is different colors because it was like if it was blood red, then it was a major MPAA issue. But if it was bright green, it makes it like they don't mm-hmm. give a fuck. It's just like a comedy aspect to it, right? And so like there's there's like some blood in this movie, but it's not. I feel like most of it is like. They really falling. do save it for that one scene, well, too. It, like, a lot of what you see, though, from it is, like, you see, you know, it falling onto the clay and getting sucked up. Or, like, whatever. Right. It's not like, you know, somebody's, like, guts being ripped out and, like, whatnot. It's pretty sparing. And then, like, the way they use the clay, I feel like, is also smart because there's a lot of tentacles aren't the right word but like you see a lot of sort of like i don't know appendages kind of grow or like come out of it or whatever yeah and like the way they do it is it's not like claymation it would it's literally will just be like like they wrapped clay around something to have it like protrude out right so you're not having to do like the typical claymation like start stop start stop like whatever thing like i don't know i think like the way they went around like all of the effects in this was pretty smart. And like yeah. you said, like I I don't know what kind of like reception this movie got outside of it hit my radar because somebody I follow on Letterbox that is like a like Japanese horror connoisseur gave it a four and a half stars and I was like, oh, okay, so I should add this to like the watch list immediately. Yeah, and I remember you and I talking about doing it a while ago because I remember that image of, like, the clay doll at the end. But, like, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know how this is somehow just, like, so good. This is probably, like, at my top of, like, Japanese horror now. Yeah, it's very good. Like, I'm glad this is one kit missed. Do you, do you think he wouldn't like it? No, I don't know. I think he would have probably liked it. I'm going to tell him to watch it. He should. Now. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's, without further ado, um, this this movie starts, I, I will say the beginning was a little confusing, um, but then you do start to put everything together. So I'm just going to, you know. Uh, it starts with a bunch of um, stats about different art schools in Japan and like the rate of acceptance essentially. And I didn't look up anything about this. So I had no idea that this was about like, like I said, kids trying to get into art school. So I was like very confused off the bat. And I was like, why are they giving us these like stats? Um, But really it is just to show like how very competitive getting into these schools are, which is like, I don't know. It's true. of I think pretty much anything. I'll say I feel Uh, like both. If you're trying to go to like any, you know, non local uh like community college, it's probably like that here too. 
Yeah. <laughs> um, then there's the it cuts it starts with black, whatever. It's there's like this loud rumbling and cracking <gasps> and we're this is also like a pretty interesting movie because like I feel like the main character there isn't really a main character. Like they introduce a main character and then it kind of switches. So we are we meet our like original main character um who basically like opens the door and sees like a bunch of destroyed sculptures and then it shows her pulling up to a house and then it shows her gardening and i was like what in the fuck is going on okay so this woman uh we find out a lot in flashbacks and i actually do think that the movie is done really well in that i mean i feel like that's pretty much like a thing in these kind of movies too, where it's like they piece to get, give you the information. You don't really have the full story until the end. I mean, like obviously a lot of movies do that, but <laughs> the way that they do it, I think is still pretty good. So the main, the main character now is, I think that her name is, um, Miss Aina. And like the people don't really say each other's names that often. I was so gonna I, say I don't think I remember a single name. That I this kind movie. of had to like wait till the end to deduce from the cast list like who was who. So sometimes I don't have their name written down and I might get them mixed up. But basically, it's Mrs. Aina and she um, is starting. They live in Japan, obviously, and she is had an art studio that was destroyed by the earthquakes so the earthquakes are like a really big theme throughout this movie and so she basically goes and has to find a new art studio which is this like really cool looking but very obviously dilapidated old house that she renovates um to make this new art school she's digging up the um weeds and shit on the property uh, and this is when she unearths a tin that has a bunch of random art supplies as well as a bag of clay in it. <laughs> um, I feel like I would be extremely creeped out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I would, I would too. I don't, I think I would not even open it knowing me because people normally bury stuff for a reason. You know what I mean? Um, so there's a sign on the door that basically says like that alludes to the fact that this is like the new art room and um miss Aina is the teacher she's got a handful of students and they're kind of talking about this student named Kauri who was studying with them and then went to go study in Tokyo and like you know they're you know blabbing about her or whatever uh and there basically is this theme and like i feel like this is true in real life of like anywhere where the kids live in the countryside and so they're kind of talking about how like prestigious it is to be in the city and like learning from city teachers must be so much more beneficial and all this stuff <clears throat> and it like very obviously rubs i know the wrong way where like she gets mad a lot. I have to say, she's kind of, in my mind, like a little unstable to be being a teacher, but it is what it is. I think you have to be unstable to be a teacher. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like yelling at the children constantly is probably not. Well, maybe they shouldn't love Tokyo so much. That's true. Uh, to be fair, Tokyo is very cool. I would... I feel like I'd be happy living in the countryside too, though. It's just different. Anyways, they're basically like the they're talking about like how cool it is to like probably be in Tokyo and like blah blah blah. And Aina's like a little embarrassed. I feel about being in the countryside. <laughs> and um, anyways, uh, the girl that they're talking about who went away to study in Tokyo, Kauri comes back and she is like, "Hey, I'm back." <laughs> um, and they're like all gushing around her and stuff and so then it kind of switches to where I felt like she was the main character for a while but um, basically they're doing a pottery class and since Calorie wasn't supposed to be back yet they let this new student use her like bin of clay and she's like oh don't worry like it's fine like I'll find some other clay to use so she's just like the clay that 
the teacher dug up from the ground in this mysterious tin box. She just like brings into the art studio. Sure. And I was like, girl. <laughs> um, hey, she and... wasn't using it. Give it to one of the students. I mean, well, fair. So, um, so Calorie is like just digging around. She ends up finding the bag of clay that Aina had pulled up and she sits down with it. She starts rehydrating it. And so it's like, if you have no concept of art or clay, obviously clay dries out, you spray water on it to reconstitute it. And that kind of like brings it back to life. And then you have to like knead it a bunch to get it to a point where you could like sculpt with it. So that's like essentially what she's doing. Uh, and this cuts immediately into like it's showing her reconstituting the clay and it cuts into this very weird music uh, where we get the credits and the title of the movie. I kind of liked the score to this movie. <laughs> it's like some points it doesn't feel like it fits perf like right, but like I kind of like that and made the like a lot of it feel a little like off kilter. Yeah. Though there was like I, that's also why I was trying to like look up the look up more about this because I was trying to look at the music to see if I like recognized any of the bands. There's like this one song where this uh some and it's like because this is like a very weird like instrumental score and then towards the end of the movie there's a bunch of weird like actual songs that are kind of like upbeat when things are happening that are not upbeat at all and it was a little like disarming it was like you're like what's happening here she's singing <laughs> i don't know um okay so yeah so the title um so uh, calorie is modeling the clay they're for some reason making like conch shells on sculptures for some reason and she's like modeling with it and she's commenting that it like feels kind of strange um, there's a point where she sprays the, her sculpture that she's making with the water bottle and it like pulsates. There's a lot of pulsating in this movie. I gotta say, I'd probably be done right about then. I, it, I, I, I give up art for the rest of my life. Goodbye. <laughs> um, then there is a showing of all of the sculptures and Aina, uh, rates all of them. And this is, again... I just feel like she's she's just like very harsh and the reason that we find out she's harsh to me is what makes me feel like she, she's just like taking it out on them for no reason uh but anyways there's like all the sculptures and she's giving them like first place second place third place whatever um calorie and this girl reiko who i think her name is reiko uh seem to have kind of like a little bit of like an imagined like um, beef going on between them or whatever. They both end up getting first place. Uh, or no, Reiko gets first place, but then Calorie gets second place, but they have the same rating. <laughs> and the teacher's like, Reiko, like yours is really good, but it's, but it's, but it's derivative of something that you've done before. And you can't just turn to these conventional like things if you want to get into art school. And I'm like, it being reminiscent of something that she did before is called having a style, but okay, what do I know? I was also going to say, like, also, like, how much do you expect this, like, 16-year-old or whatever to, like, <laughs> be doing differently? Yeah, I, I, I'm not really sure. I also, like, don't really understand the point of the sculptures, because they're, like, shapes with conch shells on them, and, like, I don't really understand... Maybe there's some deeper meaning that I'm missing. Well, I don't they know. were listening to Sublime the entire time they were making uh, it. Okay, fair. I, oh, wait, um... those are puka shells. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Could you imagine people wearing, like, huge-ass, like, conch shells around I'm sure their neck? somebody did. Some freak that went to a Red Hot Chili Peppers concert. <laughs> some freak. <laughs> Instead of chain wallets, it's, like, puka shells and yeah. conch shells. Um, I'm in. Yeah, I have to say, uh, when we see their, like, self-portrait sculptures later, and they're, like, making fun of that one girl's because it looks like fucking shit, I'm like, she, I can't even do that. I, one of the things that I could never do was, like, 
like we would have clay segments in class or whatever and i i'm not gonna lie i sucked at it i was so bad i don't remember i mean i'm sure we did but i feel like the only time i could like think about us doing that would have been like elementary school where it wasn't like a it was essentially just like please stop being loud just do something yeah sort of thing. Play-Doh. <laughs> <laughs> make make your mom an ashtray um i don't remember doing that yeah, I mean, I don't, I do remember in middle school doing it, and we, I made a plate that has, like, a killer whale on it, but it was, like, you know, back when we would, I mean, there's still appropriation of this, but it was, like, a quote-unquote tribal, like, symbols on it and stuff like that, and uh, she still has it, and I'm like, could you please throw this away? And then when I got into high school, I took, like, advanced art or whatever, so we did, like, pottery wheel stuff, and for the life of me, can't do it. I legitimately don't think I had an art class outside of one computer art class in high school. I don't think I had anything past, like, elementary school in the form of, like, well... No, that's what I mean. It wasn't art, but I know it's. I'm trying to think. We took. I know I had to take like a sewing class. Yeah, we did that in middle school. We did sewing and like quote unquote home ec. So it was like sewing. Yeah, it was like seventh and eighth grade for me. Cooking. Yeah, high school. They might have all been electives for me. All, obviously, like, although I... what ended up happening was we missed so many days during the year for snow that year that essentially if we just started. Like, the bag we were supposed to be making, we got a passing grade, so, like, I never finished it. Perfect. And then, yeah, I think the only art, other art thing I took is I took intro to, like, computer arts, and it was very lame. Yeah, I never took computer my, arts, My teacher but... liked metal, so I didn't really do much, and we just, like, would make everybody listen to, like, Slayer and shit at, like, 7 in the morning. Perfect. I remember my art teacher was um, from Michigan, and... Of course, we were ch- children, so we would make fun of her accent because she had like a really thick, like, mm. mish- like a like a you know, northern accent and stuff. And uh, all of us, it was like me and like my like a group of friends were all of course uh, into anime, so we would want to draw like anime for the assignments. And she'd be like, "Anime is not art. It doesn't take any skill to draw it." And then we were like, "You f- you fucking try it." Uh, and so she ended up building in cartoon slash anime like projects because we all like would not listen to her and just draw whatever we want it was pretty great i was gonna be funny um, like, oh, that teacher ended up being miyazaki <laughs> no i don't know uh i wonder how she's doing um <laughs> i literally like all i really remember doing is like i think we only had to do like one project or whatever and where we had we were supposed to like make an updated version i think of like a classic art piece and mine was just the fucking oh why am i blanking on the name like the two like the farmer and his wife with the pitch yeah, oh, uh, yeah american yeah. gothic yeah and i just realized that like there was a thing that you could do on it where it would like uh you know, you could just, like, they click, like, the paint can or whatever, and it would, like, do... It would cover, like, a specific area with, like, uh, whatever color you picked. And I just made them look like T-1000s by just doing, like, some silver. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> it was so I love shitty. That. <laughs> yeah, my, um... Now that I'm thinking, yeah, like, I... T- I think no surprise to anybody, most of mine were, um, like, between, between like, creative writing class and art, I really wonder why none of my teachers were wondering if anything was wrong with me, because I definitely did, like, weird stuff in art, like, skulls, and, like, there's this one piece I did that's, like, the, 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 the whole, like, idea of the project was that it was supposed to be across three frames and so most people did like three frames like um horizontally where it would be like a mountain range going through each of them or whatever but i I did mine vertically and it was like (laughs) it was like this person hanging on a cross but like 
half of them was just their skeleton with like viscera and then there was like a little girl holding a sk- or something and like who knows what the hell was going on there and then i did like the gas mask you know the cover of let it unfold you mm. <laughs> I did like the gas mask of that in like watercolor. I got a hundred on that one, which is pretty nice. Uh, and then it broke my nose, but that's another story. Anyway. Way to go. Um, I know. Broken nose sounds uh, terrible. Yeah, I gotta be honest with you. I did not know that it, it was broken until years later. I went to get my wisdom teeth out and they like did an x-ray and the doctor was like, no, you oh, you, you, your nose, you got your, your nose broke or whatever. And I was like, huh? And he was like, yeah, you can, you can like literally see it in the x-ray. It's just like, you can see it in the x-ray. That's, and I was like, that's the weird. That septum you were talking about last week. Yeah, yes, yes. I literally, actually, yes. And I was like, huh, how, when did that, ha-? and then I remembered back to when that painting fell on my nose and that must've been when it broke. And I actually just didn't even know, which I actually looked up and that's kind of common because like, it whatever um and yeah so now 55 years later i still have a deviated septum and that's the, that's the story anyway <laughs> i think they've only broken toes that's the only bones i've ever broken and that wasn't until uh i had paul and he would constantly yep. step under my feet and i would end up like kicking an ottoman or some shit across the room and breaking two of my toes to not step yeah on. i broke just my nose, obviously, and then I broke a toe, and uh, same, it was a dog situation. I don't even so... know how, because I was a reckless skateboarder. <laughs> I know, actually. Yeah, I don't know. Lucky, knock on wood. I'm, I'm not I'm not really here for that now. Um, yeah, no, thank you. Brittle bones. Okay. Wow. That really all came down, that really all came from that teacher telling them that they fucking suck, essentially. And, um, uh, okay. So that night, so she's like, yeah, you, you guys shouldn't be doing the safe thing if you want to be good artists and you have to practice and try harder and all this stuff. Uh, that night we see, um, the bag of clay and a, what I called a clay tendril. Uh, they are very tentacle and phallic like throughout the movie. They get kind of worse. Uh, but right now it's just kind of like a skinny little tendril. It comes out from under the plastic and steals a razor blade off the desk that Reiko was using like earlier in the day. (laughs) Yeah. So the next morning, all the kids are back working on their sculptures. Calorie is molding her clay and, um, cuts her thumb open, uh, because the clay has ingested the razor blade. So the razor blade is just in the clay. She cuts her thumb open and she's like, Oh, she digs in there and she finds the um, the razor blade. And obviously she, earlier she had seen Reiko leave it there. So she, I love how fucking petty this clay is too. Because like not only is it coming to life to try and like kill people. It's also like pitting these girls against you. It's like, it's like pl- pl- placing false blame on the other girl to like have them have beef. Which I think is great. So... Calorie, of course, is like, oh, my God, Reiko did this. This is crazy. And she's, like, bleeding onto the clay. But the clay just, like, absorbs it. She doesn't find that weird at all. No. Seems normal. She's like, all right. She also doesn't get up and, like, wash her hands or anything. She just continues to (laughs) model the clay. And I was like, okie doke. Um... uh, Randomly, this older man walks up and sees that the house is no longer abandoned and he rushes to the site where the clay was buried and sees that uh, i love that aina just like left that huge gaping hole yeah she's just like well i'm done here uh sees that the hole is empty and then we get these like random flashes of memory from him and he is very scared also we see he turns his, his face to the camera and we see that his face is scarred a little bit and he limps away and you're like, okay, something's going on here for sure. If I didn't think clay tendril was enough of a, like a, alert here, um, this man really does it for me. So, 
Uh, now the kids have to do sculptures of themselves. There's absolutely no way I could have ever pulled that off. That's for sure. I'm amazed at anyone that could do any sort of like self portrait type thing, but especially like I feel in like, clay. Yeah. D no idea. Couldn't begin to understand. And uh, while they're doing this, um, Aina has these like flashbacks of essentially what is a teacher like a, a a male art teacher like showing doing art you know like doing art teacher stuff and her being sad so you're like okay something went poorly there for sure we'll find out later then uh she lectures them about sucking again essentially and is like take care of yourselves and storms out of the classroom uh <laughs> i was like jesus christ fair <laughs> um i have okay uh, maybe, yeah, I don't know. I feel like I, I feel like I sounded crazy. I, we were all crazy teenagers, but I was fine. It worked out. I'm all right. I was going to say maybe if my teacher would have yelled at me, then things would have turned out different, but I think I'm okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm totally normal. <laughs> okay. That night, uh, who would have thought Vampire Clay would just really bring out all these personal issues that I've had. Real weird uh, <laughs> learning adventure watching this movie. Listen, you you see yourself reflected in in the <laughs> unlikeliest of places. Okay, so that night, uh, I didn't like this. The um clay sculpture that Calrie has made of herself is like covered in plastic because like essentially if you're not done working on the piece you spray it with water and cover it in plastic so that it stays like so it doesn't harden and crack essentially so there's a lot of scenes where like the clay is coming out of plastic situations and this is a piece of clay that comes out of the plastic that is shaped like a tongue which really freaks me out because like she they're, they're they're sculpting, like, the outside of their faces. She didn't sculpt a tongue, you know what I mean? This thing just, like, invented it. And it escapes and attacks the class guinea pig, which is really sad. Luckily, we don't really see it, though. Um, this movie does a lot of cutaway and, like, weird angles. So, like, sometimes you can't really tell what's going on, which in this case, I'm happy about. Um but that's really the only thing that I would say that kind of bugged me because there were a few scenes where I couldn't really tell what was going on, but maybe that was a me problem. Probably. Um, <laughs> the next morning, um, the they all come to work on their bus some more, and Calrie discovers that the entire mouth slash jaw area of her sculpture is just gone, <laughs> uh, which is really unsettling. To say the least. Eh, I think uh, it's fine. <laughs> she should have just left it like that. Yeah, it looks Self portrait cooler. of a tortured artist. Um, and of course, uh, her and her friend, you know, her friend is like, Oh my god, I can't believe that Reiko did that to you. And Calorie's just like, like, I don't understand why she would do that. That seems really strange. But that's okay because I'm determined. <laughs> and she's able to fix the statue uh, sculpture in time and ends up winning and basically this is where we're, we're seeing like all of this the self sculptures of the rest of the kids calories is the best obviously by far um a lot of them don't look great again better than i could do but like you can see the talent like skill issues here and then the new girls just looks like some crazy. It looks so crazy. But um, the teacher has like the entire this entire scene. Everybody just has like a mental breakdown, essentially, <laughs> because the teacher is like, you guys suck. What are you like? You're not ever going to get into uh, a school if you're not practicing more like the new girl. She just started and hers is like at least the novelty on hers would get her to win and whatever. And the kids are just like, OK, you need to stop yelling at us because it's very obvious that like Calorie is ahead of us because she went to study in Tokyo. And we've been saying this whole time that 
they have the advantage because they have access to all of these like teachers and techniques and everything and we're in the countryside and it really just like brings back this like whole issue where the kids well where Ina feels like they're saying she's not good enough to be their teacher right and so she basically freaks out also and she's like fuck you she doesn't really say fuck you but she's basically just like I don't want to be your, your teacher anymore you kids suck and you're like not trying hard enough and you're blaming me or whatever and they're all like yelling at each other <laughs> and then um um Aina has a flashback again of essentially what we what we are finding out from this flashback is that she was dating a fellow art teacher in Tokyo and he, she caught him cheating on her with probably a student if you're asking me and she basically is like heartbroken and she leaves the city to start her first art school which is the one that got destroyed by the earthquake so like i understand that she is having trauma because of what happened but like that dude being shitty has nothing to do with if tokyo is great do you know what i mean like uh, he's not the only art he's not the only art teacher in tokyo and like i don't know she doesn't reveal to them that she also used to be a teacher uh, in tokyo Google says all of tokyo only has one art teacher at a time okay all right fair i'm proven wrong <laughs> i'll admit when i'm wrong anyways um so that's like here tokyo that's is a pretty small town anyway so yeah, it is very small. Um, <laughs> uh, so anyways, that's her backstory, right? She was, like, jilted by this fucking piece of trash. She goes to try and start over. Her first brand new start is ruined by the earthquake, and now her kids are being shitty. I mean, it happens, you know? Um, and this whole time that everyone's, like, yelling to each other about this situation... Calorie is trying to explain that, like, she doesn't think she's actually better than anybody, but, like, it's the clay. Like, something is weird about the clay that's, like, making her excel at art. Um, Makes sense to me. Sure. And then, suddenly, there's an earthquake. All the kids are scared, obviously. Uh, and then something kind of, like, shakes Aina awake, where she's, like feels bad for having been so mean to them. She's like, oh my God, are you guys okay? Like, I'm sorry I yelled at you. Like, yeah, we can think about getting like a, a guest teacher to come in from Tokyo if that's what you want or whatever. And then Reiko's like, no, I don't want to be a cog in the machine or some dumb shit. And then she's like, I'm just going to stay late and work on my sculpture. Oh, great. Yeah, you do you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Reiko stays, like, to practice, like, working on her sculpture or whatever. She goes to look at Calorie's statue to kind of, like, study, like, why she's so much better. This is where the movie really just launches up into space and doesn't stop. So she is looking at the sculpture. She cuts herself on a screw that's just sticking up out of the table, I guess. And as she does that the ear on the sculpture falls off. So she, with her hand she just cut, reaches out and picks up the ear and sticks it back on the, the sculpture, her bloody hand, right? And this is like that, um, the ginger dead man where it's like any excuse to get your blood mixed in the thing, they're going to do it. <laughs> um, people are bleeding left and right here. Uh squelches the ear back on the statue and the statue absorbs her blood. Um, then it immediately comes to life and bites on her hand. She's screaming. Uh, the sculpture is like, ow, 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 you know, and she's As like flailing around. Do. Yeah. She's flailing around. She's got her entire hand stuck inside the sculpture. She's like beating it on the ground and stuff. Um, then a mouse made out of clay, comes out of the sculpture's ear and climbs on her, under her shirt for some reason, and then tries to go down her throat. But she's able to, like, grab it and throw it away. The sculpture has, like, a, like a, like a goopy clay tentacle thing 
that's like extended out of it and wrapped around some kind of fixture to try and like hold her onto the ground. And so once she throws the mouse, she like stands up and stomps on it. So she like severs the head from the tentacle, but the head's still on her hand. So she like runs into like the kitchen where she is trying to stab it in the face with a knife, but nothing's happening. Then she holds it over the fire and it finally lets go and is like trying to crawl away, but she slams the um, stove like into it and squishes it up against the wall and kills it or whatever. And she's like, that was weird. Well, better get back to class. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. She uh, takes out her phone and tries to use it, but her fingers are disgusting and limp. Like, I can't even describe the effect when she, like, picks up her phone and tries to push, like, the open button and her finger just, like, fucking bends all (laughs) willy-nilly. It's so gross. It looks disgusting. It's just like, and then she holds up, just like pushing wet it's clay like into something. Yeah, yeah, gelatinous, and like it's so gross. And um, she holds her hand up, and it, this is what's on the cover. If you look at it, the fingers start independently bending, all fucking weird in different directions. It is so <laughs> unnerving. Happens to the best of us. I would probably faint immediately (laughs) um then her finger then the fingers kind of like all eventually her hand her fingers like start melting together and then her hands melt together so it's like one solid like loop and she's like freaking out and screaming like obviously and she's like trying to slam her like globby hands against the um against a desk to like break them apart And it works, except for that, like, her arm breaks off, like, under the shoulder. And so that shoulder is just, like, dripping, like, clay water, essentially. (laughs) And now her entire right arm is, like, both of her arms as one gloopy piece of clay. And she's, like, swinging it around and, like, screaming. And she looks, she, she really is defeated at this point. She's just like, okay, what the fuck am I supposed to do? And her arm's swinging around. And then um, her clay arm turns into what I would describe as a, like, whale. And it devours her (laughs) whole. It eats her entire body. Been there. This movie's relatable. Yeah, it is a mood, actually. Yeah. Uh, the next morning, the uh, kids, the remaining kids all come to the studio and it's completely wrecked. The girls are like, I can't believe Reiko would do this. Like, why would she do this to us? And Calorie is like, well, uh, she did hate me and has been trying to sabotage me by putting razor blades in my clay and then ruining my sculpture, which, as we know, was not actually Reiko. And Reiko is trying to defend herself and say i didn't do that the clay is alive this that and the other thing and they do this thing (laughs) where like the clay is alive is such a funny phrase (laughs) (laughs) it came to life and so they're like talking and they're like i went to her like i went to reiko's house and she's not there but her parents aren't there either and i've been trying to call her she's missing and, and reiko's like what are you talking about i'm right here but then they reveal that um Reiko is actually just inside of the sculpture as a clump of clay now, and nobody can hear her talking. Uh, Calorie then, defeated, rips the statue apart, and it's literally ripping Reiko into pieces. Uh, That sounds terrible. Yeah. I'm not a fan. I don't feel like I wouldn't like that. Um, later, the broken pieces of Reiko's face are bleeding all over the place. It's, like, just her eye, just her nose, her mouth, like, all separate pieces are, like, bleeding and stuff. Um, but then they all, like, the blood runs, it does that thing where it kind of, like, backward, like, rewinds it, where the blood goes back into it, and then the clay all forms together into the most insane looking clay person thing that I've ever seen in my life. This clay monster is actually so scary and I hate it. 
Um, but then it reforms back into Reiko, and you're like, okay, what's what's going on here? What's <laughs> going on with this? Uh, meanwhile, the new girl whose name is Yuka is outside uh, trying to sneak in a sig. And Reiko appears and she's like, oh, my God, Reiko, like we've been looking for you. What's going on? Reiko immediately takes Yuka's hand and cuts it open with a box cutter and then starts drinking the blood. And um, typical she's art like, class. Some I, real honestly, art student behavior. Honestly, definitely. <laughs> um. <laughs> And she's, like, literally sucking so much blood out of her hand that her hand, like, mummifies or something. And so Yuka's, like, freaking out, of course, right? And she's trying to, like, pull away from Reiko. But she ends up just ripping out, a like, a huge chunk of Reiko's hair slash face. And you can see, like, she she pulls away the chunk. It is a huge chunk. And it's so fucking gross looking and it's, like, pulsating. And then it shows Reiko again and, like, the chunk that she ripped out of her face. There's just, like, really gross, like, white clay back there. It's so gross. Um, yeah. Well, again, like, the effects are pretty well done. I'm yeah. actually curious. I'm going to see if I can figure out what the budget was for this. Yeah. Uh, yeah, really gross, creepy white face. And then the clump of hair slash face that Yuka pulled out uh, also has an eye in it or something. And then it kind of like takes over her hand where it like melts into her skin. And um, then it melts back into Reiko. Uh, yeah, doesn't seem great. No. I don't. So yeah. Uh, so now, the uh, the I you know the teacher is like, where did Yuka go? So she goes out back, and Yuka comes walking up all fucking weird looking. And if you haven't been able to follow what's going on, essentially, the clay monster pretended to be Reiko, absorbed Yuka, and is now pretending to be Yuka. Yeah, there's a lot so, of like <laughs> like like body switching isn't the right term, but. <laughs> Like, a lot of, like, um, honestly, kind of, like, the thing, where you're just, like, who's uh, yeah, playing, was, who's not? Yeah, I was literally about to say that. You don't know who the monster is, is and who isn't. What is 700,000 yen? Or wait, maybe that's not for this movie, but there's a sequel. I don't... 700,000? Yeah. Let's see. Well, 7,000 yen would be like or 700 yen would be like seven american dollars so like so, seven thousand give or take seventy thousand i think Something so like that, oh, that see seems the, right the budget of this or the sequel i can't tell from this article <laughs> yeah um so yeah so now yuka is the clay monster she walks up to aina and she is going to stab her but then um i didn't know what his name was and i just called him boy <laughs> there's one male uh student and here he is of course he's in like a love tri- i didn't really include this but he's like in a love triangle with with two of the girls uh, he opens the door and bumps into Yuka, causing her to drop the knife. And then he's just, like, talking to her like she's normal. She, once she becomes a clay person, she just, like, sits and stares. And he doesn't, he's supposedly, like, in a courting type situation with her because he's like, hey, I'm really looking forward to, like, eating the lunch that you made me. Which is, like, if a girl likes... If a girl likes a boy, like she'll, it's like a, one of those like common practices where she'll like yeah, they stare make off a bento into and yeah, <laughs> turn into clay. Mm-hmm. Um, they'll like make a bento lunch for them and bring it, and like that, it's like a whole thing or whatever. So he's like, I'm really looking for, and he doesn't notice that anything's wrong, which is kind of typical, I guess. Um, but she hears this, and so he he's like, see you later, he he, and Yuka opens the lunch that she's made for him. Puts some of the food in her mouth and then spits it back up into the bento box, which honestly <laughs> might be the grossest yep, thing in this 100%. movie. Because <laughs> it also looks to me like it's some kind of like shrimp thing. 
disgusting. Uh, at lunch, uh, the bo- boy and Yuka are alone, and so he's like, "Oh, great! Yay! Can't wait!" He starts eating the food. He takes a bite, and he goes, "He's like, ew, gross! Like this tastes like clay. What happened to it?" And she walks in and just slices his mouth open, like slices him across the mouth, and he's just like, "Oh." Just kidding. It doesn't taste that bad. And I was like, (laughs) okay. Could you imagine? Uh, Uh, No, thank you. I've seen the jackass thing where they do the paper cuts on the corners of your mouth. Hard, (laughs) hard pass. Absolutely not. Um, so he's just like, he just getting what, what the, what the frick? And she starts like licking his mouth blood and... He's, he's trying to push her away and he ends up like breaking off a chunk of her face and underneath it reveals that it's Reiko's face and he's just like oh Reiko where have you been <laughs> I want to reiterate that it's literally just like the chunk of like the bridge of her nose and her eyes bust off and it's Reiko it's not like it's her entire face and she looks normal like she's a fucking clay person he must he's like hit his head though i guess so he's like kind of delusional and then reiko's face shifts to reveal the creepy clay guy underneath he looks so scary his design really freaks me out (laughs) um the other two girls return and um i think that her name was aiko she is the one that's like in the love triangle with him like comes inside by herself and he just like shows up around the corner with a knife and she's like oh my god and she runs and um, into like the art room and slams the door, but his hand is like sticking through it with his with the knife, and she starts slamming it to the point where like she severs his hand, and it like falls onto the floor. It stops like flopping around, and then lots of very phallic looking clay tentacles pieces come like out of the hand, out from the door jam or whatever, and she's stomping on them. Stomping, stomping. Um, then Cowley comes in and is just like, hey, what's going on? And the boy attacks her uh, with like a... I This is not what it's called. I was calling it a protractor, but it's like plastic and it's a triangle that you use to make angles. It's oh not a my god, I but... forget what the term for that thing is. Hmm. Uh, it's gonna come to me while we're talking. Okay. I mean, I get. I think it's still a protractor. It might be. Uh, it is called a triangular scale, plastic triangle. Something. <laughs> I mean, just called a protractor. Oh. It is called a T-square protractor. All right, I was right, sort of. Anyways, it's one of those plastic uh, joints. Math corner's done. <laughs> uh, and it's just, like, in his clay hand, right? And he's, like, trying to stab her with it. And um, she ends up, like, grabbing the protractor and pushing it up. But since he's made out of clay... The protractor pushes up from his hand all the way up his arm, through his shoulder, up his neck, into his face. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Incredible. (laughs) It looks so good. And also, the implications of that happening to you if you were not Clay uh, sound very terrible. And so it's just, like, in his face, and he kind of is, like, shocked. He's just kind of, like, slushing around, like, there's a protractor in my face, you know? Um... Then, um... Is this when he starts stabbing at her with it? <laughs> with just his with head? His, <laughs> yes, I wrote, he tries to stab her with his face protractor. <laughs> Which is funny to say, but... Uh, this is when Miss Aino comes in, and she's basic, she basically just thinks that he's, like, attacking a student, right? So she's like, stop, stop, what are you doing? So she runs over and, like, spins him around... And um, then sees, you know, that he's got a protractor in his face. And he, like, cuts her cuts her face with it or whatever. And she's like, what the fuck? And he, like, stops and looks at her and, like, opens his mouth all fucking weird. <laughs> and, like, I don't know what was going to happen, but I didn't like it. 
Uh, and then this is when Aiko uh, comes in and throws like the bento at his face. And because he's mad out of clay, the bento literally sticks into his face <laughs> and his, his one eye is like looking at it. Like what the hell? And, um, it literally like flattens the side of his face. Um, because it falls and this i think you posted the picture of yeah. this where it's just like half of his face caved in and when you're staring at it as a still photo it looks kind of funny but but when they show it in the movie it's so fast that it's like it still looks pretty great flat face um <laughs> miss Ina like shoves him and his head just pops off and rolls across the ground which is really funny the girls are fucking screaming obviously and um what does it say your question hmm. a gross something thing starts growing out of his neck yeah i think he just starts like growing a new head or whatever because duh if... oh clay it says a gross clay thing starts growing out of his head it, it, yeah yeah it's like the um actual like face of the clay demon yeah. thing but it kind of looks like a a balloon being inflated with clay on it and they're like oh, oh no so they take a piece of plywood and put it on top of his body and just like fucking jump on and there's like blood splattering out from underneath but this is when the little clay penises start popping out of the holes oh, yeah. they look they're getting closer and closer to peni every time they show up and i'm not here for it they're popping out of the pup go popping in and out of the holes and the girls are like hammering on them with shit. Then his glo gross, like clay head pops out from the side and they're just like, Oh my shit. It, what the fuck is that? Suddenly a, 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 another piece of wood kind of like flies in and like bisects his face. I don't know if bisect is the right word. Yeah. Sure. It like hot dog styles, his face, you know, um, it's the old man from before and he's got a heater in his hands and, um, he heats up the clay head and then he smashes it into a bunch of pieces. Iko, the, the girls are all basically just like silent, kind of like trying to collect their thoughts about what the fuck just happened to them when the old man launches into a story. And this is the backstory of what's happening in the movie. There was an artist whose name was... Kyle. Kyle. His name was Bob. I think I wrote his name incorrectly. Again, I did not catch a single name in the whole movie, so... <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's... Whatever. It doesn't matter. There Kyle. was this artist who was a struggling... Who was struggling to be a sculptor. During the day, he worked at, like, a chemical waste plant or something, which I was like, okay, uh, which of course he does. And um, he would make these sculptures that were, like, fucking creepy looking. And um, he would, like, show the sculptures. And nobody really liked his work because it was, like, weird. And they didn't really like him because he, he kind of had, like, poor social skills. So people avoided him. And so he basically was, like, down on his luck. He runs into one of his former classmates who is now supposedly a famous restaurateur and he shows him the sculptures and he's just like oh my gosh these are so great people would love to have these as objets d'art and he's like okay i'll well, sell my sculptures i'll keep making more so he the sculptor starts um like making all of these sculptures and he's like naming them and stuff and um they kind of make it seem like nobody's buying the sculptures, but he keeps making them anyway until the point where eventually he starts having all these like gross like contusions on his face and he gets very sick, um, basically from dealing with the waste products at his job at the chemical factory. And so um, he, as his final like last moment, he makes his final sculpture using like literally an entire wine glass of his blood uh in the clay and he names it kakame and he says you're my child and after i die i will stay alive through you this is the only, so he's, only form of having children i can back yeah bloody clay yeah. creature 
And so he basically just like imbues his his life force into this uh, clay sculpture. I really um, I should have said this in the beginning that I really just want people to go watch this because it's great. But I keep saying that the sculptures are very creepy. I really need people to just go look at them. The design behind them is just like really uncanny valley and I, they're so creepy and I hate them. Um, so it turns out this entire time that the his sculptures were selling but his classmate wasn't giving him the money because he uh, was in his his business was failing and he was in super deep debt and he was using that money to pay off his debts instead of giving the money to the sculptor. Uh, he finds this out and he's pissed off because obviously this was like his life's dream was to be a famous sculptor and his friend cheated him out of that. So they start fighting. Uh, the Kakame falls over and hits his head and starts bleeding and then um the artist the sculpture like starts attacking the guy and then the guy just like fucking kicks him in the head a bunch and kills him uh so the sculptor is like i don't know what to do um gonna have to just burn him and uh turn him into ash and um so there's like one point in the beginning of the story where the sculptor was like, if you like them so much, why don't you just sculpt them? And the guy's like, I haven't touched clay in 20 years. So then basically what happens is that the um, the classmate is like sitting there with with his friends, like fucking pile dead ashes mixed in with the clay, the dry clay, just like sitting on the table in front of him. He's drinking some wine and he's kind of like, uh, pay, you know, trying to like pay respects, like, sorry, I killed you kind of thing. And he spills the wine onto the clay. And this is where the, uh, it reconstitutes and the clay man appears, Kakame. And um, he's like, oh my God, this is so scary that he torches him, then breaks him back up into dust and buries him. And then he basically says every year that man returns to offer his respects to his friend. And, big reveal the old man is the guy that killed the sculptor the old man who like rushes in to save him or whatever yeah. uh miss aina is basically just like um there's absolutely no way that story is true <laughs> however she was just attacked by a clay person so i feel if it were me i'd be like makes perfect sense yeah. why not um calorie is basically just like why is this happening to us we were just trying to get into art school like we weren't trying to be killed by a clay person. Do you know what I'm saying? And um, he's basically just like, I know, like, I'm so sorry. Like, this is all my fault. Like, I'm finally going to go to the police with what happened. And Miss <laughs> Ina is like, you know what? <laughs> right? Like, what? I'm sure the police are going to believe your story about clay creatures. Right? And um, Ina is like, you know, I feel responsible also because I was the one that dug up the clay and brought it to my class, which I'm going to say... Normally, I wouldn't victim blame her, but I kind of agree because you should have the the creepy ass box it was in was kind of a red flag to me. But I don't know. Why are you outside digging in the ground for clay? <laughs> why are you outside? First of all, number two, why are you digging in the ground? I don't even know why she was digging in the ground. To be fair, actually, she was. I don't know. It's uh, all so, a bad idea. So then she's like, okay. She goes immediately from, I don't believe that's true, to, you're right, I'll go to the police with you. <laughs> it's like, okay, girl. Um, so they collect all the clay, they heat it up to dry it, they crush it up again, they're packaging it to try and get it all into this box, right? So, meanwhile, um, Aiko, I know is like, I know, I know, I know is like uh okay i think we're all finished here like why don't you girls like get ready and we'll leave and she's like okay so aiko goes back in to find calorie and is immediately attacked um because she has been turned into a clay creature uh when she was they basically missed the very very first time that somebody gets attacked uh when it was reiko and she like slammed that thing behind the stove there was like clay back there and when calorie was cleaning up 
water from the rag dripped down there and reconstituted it. So it attached to her and now she's half clay person. She's got a really um, Tomie look in this situation because like half of her face is all like bulbousy and then she's got like one eye that's all f- funky looking and it's like blue and it's like very creepy she just like shows up and it like attacks her or whatever um and of course Iko is like screaming and freaking out because I they were best friends or whatever and the old guy and I know come in to find Calrie like a mo- clay monster right he immediately torches her and there's just like this whole scene of her being on fire and everybody just like cry screaming <laughs> to like pop music in the background and then there's like pictures of her and this was really surprising to me because the way that I told it doesn't really kind of like show that like they really to me made Calrie seem like she was going to be the main character because she's like the one that's going to go to school and she was popular and she had like the most kind of like dialogue like most of the people interacting in the movie were interacting with her so the fact that they like turned her into a monster and then killed her I thought I was like okay I like like great because I thought it kind of seemed like Oh, of course, obviously, she's going to survive. She's the main character. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. final girl type thing. They just fucking killed her, though. Um. Then there's kind of, like, a jump scare of Aiko, like, crying into the bag of clay. But the old guy, like, runs over and shuts the bag before her tears can hit it. And he's like, why don't you get out of here? And Aiko is just like, you know what? This is your fucking fault for killing that sculptor. You should have never done that. Everybody that is dead is dead because of you. And um, before anything, before he can, like, respond, this there's another earthquake. And the earthquake knocks a painting off of the wall, which, like, goes whoosh. And the force, like, the wind from the painting basically blows all of the clay dust, dust out of the bag all fucking over the old guy's face (laughs) he's like screaming because of the earthquake and he's just like inhaling all of the clay dust and i was like oh no this is probably bad um and it's like slow-mo too it was like really crazy uh and um then he starts there's also this like pov from the point of the dust going into his nose and like down his throat that they've like crafted out of like paper mache or something. And it looks insane. Uh, so he's ingested the dust. He immediately starts freaking out and he's like s- flopping against the wall and he's like bodies pulsating and whatnot. And Kakame just fucking like busts out of his stomach. No, thank you. It's this is like the part that's the most bloody because there's like literally waterfalls of blood and clay water and shit like f- like spilling forward as Kakami's busting out. And um, this is the part where um, they do use stop motion for Kakame, the clay doll. Um, but I think it's done in a way that's like really creepy looking because essentially what happens is that like um, the old guy like falls down into like this, like the entryway of the house because it's like a refurbished house or whatever and he falls down so the girls are like up in the living room kind of like area like looking out and they can't see anything and then they just see like the top of Kakami's like bloody clay head (laughs) and they're like oh my god what is that it's like done it's shot I like loved this scene I thought it was done so well and then Kakame like pops up the stair and it's like this weird jerky slow motion thing that reminds me of that scene of um, Jeffrey Combs in House on Haunted Hill, where he's like the doctor, and he's like, bleh, 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 you know, yeah. that's what he does. Um, so it's like that, because they cut away enough between this weird stop motion and the girls that I thought it was like really effective. So he starts like coming at them, and um, uh, Iko is able to get up and like put the tables next to each other, so it's like blocking them from from view essentially and then they're just like silent they're kind of like looking around like we don't know where he is and then he like pops up behind them and um he's starts to go after miss aina and aiko is like 
I don't know. I thought that she was going to turn on the heater. So she was like luring him over to her, but she doesn't do that. So I'm not really sure like what she was trying to do here, but she basically like offers the cut on her hand, like the blood offers him. She's like, here, here, come over here. So he comes over to her and he cuts her nose. And then suddenly he's like huge. His head is like, the size of the room almost and he's like mom like he's gonna swallow her <laughs> it looks so crazy uh somehow the old guy is alive and he comes up behind kakame and stabs him and it's just like enough you need to leave these kids alone like i'm so sorry i did this to you it was my fault and like i'm dying so just like leave them alone but kakame's like i don't think so i would rather just stay a vampire clay you know and just live my life um yeah it seems seems like a good life being a vampire clay. yeah yeah like whatever do whatever you want uh but instead kakame just beats him to death and again this scene is very bloody so almost all of the blood in this movie is literally just yeah. this old guy getting like fucked up um so yeah, beats him to death. Miss Aina uh, picks up a like rebar and like runs Kakame through with it and kind of like sticks him into the wall. And then Aiko comes up and stabs him a bunch and it's just like stabbing holes in him. Then there's some kind of like internal claymation thing that happens that I have no idea like what's actually happening or how to explain it. It's just like gloopy pieces of gloop but there's also like a green substance i like literally have no gloopy idea gloopy pieces of gloop yeah like i don't know what's happening <laughs> but it's it's like a stop motion situation i really don't know um and as he's being like stuck to the wall they bring the torch to him and again we see this from like the pov of being inside him and we see his like clay inside faces screaming as he's being like t burned from within it's very crazy Seems is the only word not great no and then it just like shows him being stuck to the wall like burning from the inside which is like the picture of his face that I that I remember seeing like in the preview or whatever, which is again while I was like, I'm not really sure how to feel about this, but it's great. It's really cool. It's very cool. Um, then it fades out. Uh, it fades back in. We see Tokyo. Uh, Miss Aina and Aiko have the box um, that says mold modeling clay inside and they're carrying it around and they basically come to leave it on the doorstep of the tokyo art university like the plan is to leave this box of vampire clay in front of the door of that dude that fucking cheated on her and i was like oh a little revenge story i like that but then as they're walking away aina it starts just like fucking breaking down and crying and realizes that she can't like unleash this evil on other people Coward. right um, so they decide to go bury the box out in the woods. Um, meanwhile, there is a report on the news about the old man's body being found at the art studio. And they're kind of like saying that he is suspicious. Uh, they suspect him of foul play. So basically, they're like saying the other kids that disappeared, they like think that he had something to do with that. Which, um, fair. You know, you just killed somebody for no reason. So... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, so then we see a shot of the box that's full of the clay underground and we see this for a while because it's showing us basically the box being underground so long. It's like aging. The, the color of the tape is dulling. There's like roots growing all, all around the box. And then, um, eventually there is some kind of like digging going on so that people can bury trash down there but the trash has like cut the box open in a way that a root from a tree has gone into it and when it rained the water trickled down the root and into the box and reconstituted the dust so that eventually this scene kind of stretches on a little bit long but eventually kakame busts out of the dirt 
Uh, except for now, he's got a really long, crazy war- war- worm, W O R M, worm body, like Heidi Klum. Uh, and everybody who has died, his faces are a part of his clay worm body. Again, hard to describe the scene. It literally is so wild. He's like, mom! His like, body's all long and wiggly and squiggly, and it's like fucking gross. Uh, and then I thought that was going to be the end. Which is where I feel like they should have definitely just cut it. Because what happens after that is then we see the city skyline and it starts like exploding and people are screaming and it's like catching on fire. Then there's footage of the sculptor dancing to music and then like Kakami's face. And I'm like, so you're trying to like infer that he crawled out of the forest and then immediately started destroying the city like Godzilla. Like, I don't I don't love that, to be honest with you. Um, but that is actually the end. I mean, I'm curious if that's where, like, the sequel picks up, or if, like, I wonder, like, like yeah, I wonder I if he know. had the idea going into it for doing a sequel, or if that was just supposed to be sort of like a downer ending that then he decided to make a sequel. I don't know, because I feel like, um, I, I, I did end up giving this movie four stars, uh, again, it's in, it was like I was not expecting it to be like balls off the wall and it like really was and like we said the effects look really good for the most part uh it lost a star for me for this like random ending because I feel like it's it's formulaic wise this ending like him coming out of the ground as like a fucking worm with the people's faces on it I thought was really cool but the fact that he's like still alive, I feel like you could have just cut it out at that. The showing the city with like the buildings falling and explosions and stuff, I thought was a little hokey for me, and so I I feel like it lost a star, like half a star for that. And then like the other half was just like I said, sometimes the scenes were a little bit choppy because they were trying to get away around like maybe some of the affects stuff that they didn't have down correctly like and it's smart to do that but at the same time like some of the stuff like i said was like kind of hard to follow what was happening but um i don't know yeah i don't know i liked it i don't yeah it was great the sequel does not have like really any info on letterboxd it just is like literally it's just like saying it's like a direct continuation it's mostly pretty and, and, much the plot, and I think two of the actors come back. Right, and but it also says that it came out in 2019, so I'm not really sure. I did see that um, this is the this movie is like his first feature length, and then he also has shorts that said you could watch on his YouTube. So but this says it's a hundred minutes though. Oh, the the sequel. Yeah, I mean, just, so it's, I don't it's know. Like hour forty. That's not like. Oh, it says Kakame, the evil mutt through which a frustrated artist filled his revenge spirit returns to the charge in this direct continuation of vampire play. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, because I was trying to look at like the reviews, but none of the reviews really have like info about like what the the plot is or whatever. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. It's not streaming on anything, so. I'm not watching it anytime soon. But if it ever pops up on like Tubi or something, I will absolutely watch it. Yeah, definitely. It looks like Miss Aina comes back. And uh, there must be a flashback because the old man is in this also. Yeah, he's in it. And then whoever Yuri is, I'm guessing. She's the teacher. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I see the last name. Yeah. Yeah, Those two come back and that's it. Well, yeah, I'm interested if we can find it. But yeah, it's a surprising banger. Yeah. I would say if somebody asked that question that we had on the Q&A, that was like, what well, was a surprising movie? I'd be like, this one. Uh, but by the time we get to it, I will not remember that we watched it, I bet. <laughs> um. All right, did you look up any news at all? Uh, I did. The only thing that I saw that is at all interesting to me is, well, it's half interesting. 
Uh, Joko Anwar is coming out with a new TV series called Nightmares and Dream- Daydreams, which uh, I feel like I'm 100% down with like a horror series, uh, but then I saw it's going to be like a Netflix exclusive, so I don't know. Are you going to watch Monsters, the Lyle and Eric Menendez story on Netflix? Probably not. <laughs> Um, let's see, yeah, there's, I'm not seeing, like, anything on Instagram that's at all interesting. Uh, other than Mia Goth kicking some background actor in the head. <laughs> yeah, there's... Are you gonna watch Jonathan Majors Speaks? I've already seen clips from that, and it's basically it just him being like, oh, I shouldn't have been in that relationship. It's like, great. Cool. <laughs> Um, all right. Have you watched anything this week? Um, I think the only thing I've been watching, oh, I did. <laughs> I watched something called World's Biggest Ghost Hunt. Terrible. It was essentially like, I, mean, um, it was on Tubi. I think it was on Hulu, actually. Mm-hmm. It was from 2018, and it was basically this, like, group of quote-unquote paranormal investigators go to stay at Pennhurst Asylum, which the whole story behind Pennhurst to me is extremely interesting and terrible. Uh, so I was like, oh, Pennhurst, yeah, let's let's watch that. Um, these people, it was like, the, the, the reason that they're calling it World's Biggest is because they make these investigators go and stay there for two weeks. Like, they don't leave at all. Which, you know, normally the investigative shows do, like, a day or, like, 24 hours or something. So they're supposed to stay there for, like, two weeks or whatever. Um, and it is such a waste of time. It is 82, <laughs> 82 minutes of basically this one guy being like, I'm a geologist. I don't believe in anything. And then this other girl being like, this obsidian is to ward off negative energy. And he's just like, that's a fucking joke. I, it's just a rock. And then, like, this one guy freaks out. There's, like, no evidence that they they show. Like, I do like in the shows when they debunk stuff, and there is some of that because two of them are, like, science guys or whatever. But, like, they don't really even get any activity to debunk, and then they're like, oh, man, all this crazy stuff that happened in this place. And I'm like, we didn't see any. You didn't show me any. It was just such a fucking waste of time. Um, and then I've been watching this show called Surreal Estate, which is um surreal life doing real estate flavor flavor selling houses no i don't know why it's showing me having watched that shock docs thing twice which i absolutely did not i don't know um which is a show about like the premise of it is that these realtor they're realtors but they sell they help people who have like haunted houses sell them so they either try to like banish the entity or deal with the whatever whatever and like i love the premise but the writing is kind of shitty because it's a sci-fi show yeah checks out um it's not it's not like a reality show by the way it is like a scripted tv show and so it's only two seasons so i'm like and um the girl who plays twyla on schitt's creek is in it and so i was like oh yeah so i don't know like i really like the premise and it gives me like vibes of like a serialized supernatural like supernatural show where like they go around just do which is like and grim or whatever which is like totally my shit it's just like the writing is so bad um but i'm gonna finish it just because why not (laughs) and then i think really the only thing that i've been watching was like i watched like two weeks of forged and fire when i was sick i just like laid there and watched forged and fire all day oh then i tried to watch this other show i don't remember what it was called but it was literally like forged in fire but for jousting <laughs> and it's like a competition show where there's like different teams and the people joust and it's just like it was too much for me i just like couldn't take it seriously and it's shot like a actual reality show where the guy will be like okay starting first for the black team kyle and then they would show like somebody be like i can't believe kyle's starting first i'm definitely the best jouster and i was like this is just 
normally I would eat it up because it's so dumb, but it's just like, it's a little too dumb. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Uh, I think that's kind of it. I did not, uh, this is the only thing I watched since yeah. we last recorded. <laughs> I've been working well, literally every day since then. Yeah. It, to be fair, I've been watching Surreal Estate for a while, but. Oh, yes. Yeah, so it was just 90 Day Fiance and uh, Real Housewives of Salt Lake City is pretty much like the only thing we keep up on. So, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think we watched anything else. Uh, all right. You uh, you got something you want to shout out? Oh, no. <laughs> How do I always forget? I don't know. <laughs> I know what the frick. Um, I mean, I haven't really. No, I, I don't. Uh, um, um, let's see. I haven't actually listened to it yet, but I bought a compilation on Bandcamp today when I woke up called "A Homeland Denied," uh, a compilation for the Palestinian liberation. That is a hundred and twenty-one hardcore and like metalcore like scram spans that looks very good that i'm excited to listen to that's uh where's all the money going let's see there's too many words on this oh my god uh looks like they're donating to mecca for peace.org it says like on their band camp if you donate directly and send them like a screenshot they'll give you the album for you know quote unquote free since it doesn't right. cut out like the middleman or whatever. But uh nice. I don't know. I'm excited to listen to that. hundred and twenty one tracks is very long. Yeah, that's a lot. But I'm here for it. That'll kill at least half my work shift. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um all right, next week Alien Shark. Hell On yeah. the tubes. You know it. Uh and then Probably sometime next week, uh, we'll have a bonus episode on Little Nikki. Unfortunately, <laughs> oh woof! At least Alien Shark is only seventy-two minutes. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to regret my decision. Oh god, ninety minutes of Little Nikki. Why does everybody on Letterbox have this at like four or five stars? What's wrong with you people? Yeah, my I. I'm wondering when the last time they watched it was because for me it's been 20 years. Um, 2021, 2020, oh, 2023. Okay. <laughs> well, no thanks. This is gonna be bad. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that'll be next week. Uh, if you'd like to support us, you can join our Patreon at patreon.com slash for podcast. Uh, you can buy merch at our store frontier shop. You can leave us a rating and review on iTunes and Spotify and all that shit. Uh, you can follow Kit at Hidden Kit's Three and Kitification of Blood. You can follow Katie at Werewolf Face and join Katie's Patreon at patreon.com slash werewolf face. Uh, anything fun going on over there? Uh, yeah, I should probably do something, huh? Yeah. Doing stuff's overrated. Fair. <laughs> so just give me money for free yeah. and I won't do anything. Give me enough money that I don't have to work. It's not, not a lot like... to ask. Yeah, I would like that. <laughs> uh, you can f- like listen to my other podcast, AK Movie Club. All the shit I always say. Uh, I am hesitantly excited to watch Alien Shark. <laughs> I know it's I gonna know. suck, but the one clip I saw from it, I was like, "Oh my god, this looks amazing." It might be. What if this is the year that we accidentally pick all movies that are just bangers? Um, and we're starting off strong. Well, Vampire I mean, Clay. we're about to jump into like ten good movies, so we'll see what happens after that. It's gonna be devastating. <laughs> I can already tell. Uh. Alien Shark, directed by somebody who directed a movie called The Griddle House. Ooh. Uh, the story follows teenager Jack Benson, who is on the hunt for his birth mother. He finds she has been a, she's been a regular all along at the nearby Griddle House. 
okay. Okay. <laughs> sure. I'm, yeah. Um, you could ca- you can catch me at Waffle House. That's yeah. for sure. I assume that's what it's supposed to be, but actually, it's just kind of yeah. like the poster art just looks like a generic diner. Uh, not not thrilled with the rest of this guy's filmography, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Everybody go watch Alien Shark. I bet it rocks. I bet so. And you could watch Alien Shark's Strange New Worlds, which <laughs> I think is a documentary. <laughs> oh, yeah. Definitely. Uh, oh, yeah. It's just like somebody looking at sharks in South Africa. I'm assuming that's a sequel somehow. Probably. Uh, all right. We'll be back. I hope you get clayed, but why? I don't want to be clayed. Too bad it's happening. The clay's coming. <laughs> Literally. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know there's a book out there about the. I guarantee. Hold on. Before I end this, I'm looking this up. Uh, Clay. Sentient clay. Erotica. Uh, <laughs> you're probably just gonna get like figures yeah. uh let's see book uh beach party conquest college i'm in what does that have to do with clay I let's see what oh i don't like the cover art for this <laughs> i'm not reading whatever the book clay is oh let's see what is this order of stone one Clay something. Uh. Oh, it's from the Man Love Collection. <laughs> of course. The journalist Preston Matthews wanted a human interest piece about a new monastery located in the bad side of New York City. What he found were buildings filled with helpful and hunky men. Oh, this person's name is Clay. This is not about. <laughs> Wow, he got you. We were really about to read this book. My life in phone sex, book one, Clay. And, and be like, "Where's when's the clay coming to life?" Yeah, just oh, I'm gonna find one for whenever we do that episode. I'll find us a a pot of erotica. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, all right, goodbye. Bye. <laughs>